Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Saturday series. Today we have with us Dr. Ram Mohan Sri Ram Das, Assistant as a Professor, uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering, and Dr. B. Santosh, Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, to deliver today's session on robotics and manufacturing. Before we start the session, please note that if you have any queries, please type it in the chat box. We will be addressing all your queries at the end of the session. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Ram Mohan to deliver the session. Thank you, madam. Uh, am I audible? Yes. OK, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. A very good evening to you all. And I'm sure uh, you must be eager to see what we are going to learn today, right? So you see the title goes, it is robotics and manufacturing for uh, mechanical engineers. Although uh, there these two aspects is what we are going to see, but more interestingly, we're going to see different uh, levels of uh, applications, right? So in terms of uh, robotics, we will see where exactly uh, these robotic technologies are adopted into manufacturing. And uh, there is, I mean, so let me, yeah, so as you see in this presentation, we'll be looking at how rapidly this uh, robotic technologies are adopted in manufacturing industries. And then we will also see different areas where uh, they have already been Im implemented, right? What else is needed, right? So obviously we first need to know what is already done in order for us to understand what more can be done, right? So this is where the challenges comes in. So these challenges, what are different challenges that one has to face and uh, in order for us to implement these robotic technologies in manufacturing, right? And uh, towards the end, I will also touch upon different opportunities, like se several career uh, opportunities that exist within these uh, robotic technologies, particularly in manufacturing industries. Okay, well, let us start off and say, well, if I say robot, right? So each one of you is having a different image in your, right? I'm sure if one says robot, some of you will be thinking about a more like a humanoid robot, right? Say as such, you will see that there have been, in the slide, you will see that a uh, brief, say almost 100 years ago, right? So it's not something new, but it so happens that uh, uh, the word has been appropriately used even then it was used in a play, right? So there was a very famous uh, Czech playwright, Karel Kapek. So he has um, formulated a play. And then in this uh, play, which is called uh, Rossum's Universal Robots, there are artificial humanoids which were depicted back then, say in 1920 itself, right? So, and it is that old. And based on that, like even today, you see several movies, right? So these all are like science fiction based movies. I don't have to tell the names, but uh, you see, uh, say these science fiction movies. Well, yeah, here you go, right? So you see them and you already know what is the, what are these images, right? So be it a robo or say Terminator, right? And even Wally, for example, right? So all these are, uh, they have envisioned what a robot could do, say, after 10 years, right? So they were able to do that and uh, kind of create that science fiction. And now you see some of these robots are in fact practical, right? So that kind of gives us a, a platform to stand and try to understand what these robotics is and where do we apply these uh, concepts, right? So where, from where should I start, right? So you will be having some questions like that. Let us see, right? So right from the fundamental. So here, for example, uh, we are saying, we are trying to define a robo, okay? And it is not something new, right? So the, the Robotics Industry Association has already defined a robot for us, right? And as per that, it says, well, a robot is a program, blah, blah, blah. Okay, lots of words, okay? It's not very clear to me, right? So let us try to color them, okay? Maybe we will try to color them and try to see the difference, okay? Okay, there you go. So now you see a robot 
is a reprogrammable manipulator. Okay, so it is also able to do several functions, right? So multifunctional. So it, this robot is anything. It need not. Right, so it could be anything. It is a manipulator, basically. It can be reprogrammed. Okay, that is the first thing. And then it says it has to be a multifunctional, right? So it is going to perform different tasks together. And what is it doing? Well, it is in fact designed to move something, right? So it is able to move materials or parts or tools. It could be anything. And what is it moving for? It is trying to move in a well organized manner, right? So it is go, it is performing these programmed motions and then trying to achieve some end task. OK, so this is ultimately a definition of a robot and uh, it need not be a program. It need not be a walking robot or a robot on wheels, mobile robots. So as a, as an as an example, even this is a robot, right? So this is a robot. What is this doing? It is trying to perform a welding operation, right? So that means this ro this robot, obviously, it is reprogrammable, right? So we can program it again and again. It can we can also make this multifunctional. So it need not be performing just a welding operation, but it will be able to do, say, uh, pick and place operation right? or machining operation. So we could do multiple functions using this manipulator. And uh, in doing so, we are uh, letting it move, say, a tool or a part in a programmed manner, right? So in a programmed motion is what we attribute to this. And this is a robot. And as such, this technology is not simple, right? So now you see, well, there are uh, arms to this, right? So there are motors that are going in it. It is supposed to go in a well-defined manner. And it all calls for more disciplines, right? So it is not sufficient that mechanical engineering alone is sufficient. Within the mechanical engineering domain, you will get exposed to many other aspects, right? So electrical drives, so all such things, I'll say mechatronics. So all these things are combined, right? So this is more like an engineering branch, right? So it is an interdisciplinary field, right? And it is going to integrate say engineering, be it mechanical or electrical, right? And then it is also integrating this computer science, right? So novel, all these uh, artificial intelligence, right? So these things are essential. I mean, they have become essential in these days, right? So earlier, perhaps the robots were uh, programmed once and then they were doing repeated tasks. But these days, like we will see in the couple of in the subsequent slides, what advancements have taken place in uh, this field that we need to study more and more disciplines, right? So you see that uh, several more disciplines keep coming and uh, we want to kind of have this interdisciplinary knowledge, right? So only then we'll be able to contribute to the growth in this field, right? Well, we have seen very well that what is a robot, right? So we know what is a robot now. We also would be a little interested to understand where it started, right? So although we told a century ago, we have seen that in a in a movie, right? So it was a play. But then uh, what is the practical uh, development, right? So that is more essential, right? So how is the science developing? Science fiction is okay. But science, where are we now, right? So where did we start, right? So these are the questions you might have. So this is where we started, right? So these reprogrammable robots were uh, started, say it is as old as say 1948, where uh, Gray Walter was able to construct these autonomous vehicles, right? So these are uh, just like maybe our toys, but they were more sophisticated, right? So back then, in those years, he was able to fab, uh, yeah, fabricate these uh, autonomous robots which seek light. Okay, so they used to uh, get attracted to light. Wherever there is light, they follow there. Right. So when if they get discharged, they go back and uh, plug themselves and charge. Right. So isn't it interesting and very surprising that back then itself they were able to make this kind of technology and this was the starting point right so after which you will see 
the image on the left hand side with the person like uh, with his hand on the robot manipulator right and this was the person named joseph engelberger okay this person has in is in fact now called as a father of robotics and why because he has uh, modified an uh, industrial robot which was developed by george dewall uh, which is called unimation he modified that into a more sophisticated practical robotic arm and called it as a unimate okay and this particular robot has been then adopted in say manufacturing industry particularly this uh, automobile manufacturing industry say gm and uh, they were able to install this in order to transfer the castings right you know they all these machining operations and uh, they are all in a very extreme conditions right so they are hostile you cannot stand very close to a hot metal right in which case these robots help right so they go and they can pick these uh, uh, products and then bring it uh, near to the say body of the car and then they can weld right see so so much of advancement took place right then when uh, uh, this robotic arm was designed and that was in fact the turning phase right so that is the revolution which occurred and then many universities pitched in and they wanted to contribute something to this developments right so many many universities have shown up right so this is for example on the top picture you will see a, a development from stanford research institute which was able to kind of develop this autonomous robot which can which is a mobile robot right so it can kind of go turn around say look for uh, any lights or uh, say open the door or close the door right so back in 1966 itself so it's kind of they have uh, used the technology which was available right then and were able to build this right so obviously expect what developments have taken place till now right so you will see uh, there is yet another uh, robotic arm right so in 1969 where you will see that this is the this has been more like a standard today right so this particular uh, robot arm is ser serving as a standard for all the future developments right and it is not just restricted to say manufacturing or uh, say the mobile platform but you will also note that even in medical fields right so several Uh, surgeries or tumor searching robots so all these things make you of the same knowledge right so behind the screen uh, all you have is uh, uh, the fundamental understanding of the robot right so be it a manipulator or a mobile robot so we need to understand right and uh, you won't believe there was a case study i would say in this slide you will see that uh, very recently right so a couple of years ago uh, university of liverpool had adopted a kuka robot right and this is a mobile robot of course but at the same time it has the manipulator also now you know right what a manipulator is and uh, you see this is in fact performing experiments in the lab right so right in the college it goes there and uh, performs these uh, experiments every day and then kinds of uh, reports what is the result right so a person on the other hand a student for example he has to go there and maybe he can do one experiment per day but on the other hand this robot is helping them by kind of doing say 86 experiments a day right so just imagine how fast it can do and it is interesting that uh, the results were so fascinating that it was able to develop some catalysts which are uh, like almost six times active when compared with what uh, we could have then and uh, what they are doing well they are doing a simple experiment right so they are trying to uh, uh, try to find out a photocatalyst to speed up the extraction of hydrogen from water okay so there are many possibilities like almost 98 million possibilities and this robot was able to uh, help right so isn't it interesting and this kind of uh, uh, enables us to understand further right so what is this manipulator what is this robot right so as you see it has got a very 
key elements, right? Three key elements. Okay, first one is the manipulator, as you see here, right? So the entire arm that you see is the uh, is the manipulator, right? And then you have something called a teach pendant, right? So through this, uh, you will be able to instruct the manipulator to kind of okay, go take this much of uh, dis displacement, this much of rotation. So you are able to command through this teach pendant, right? And then you have another controller which is actually performing the actions, right? So it is sending the commands to the manipulator so that it does. What is it doing basically? Just look into it, right? So all that it is doing is trying to rotate, right? So it is trying to rotate a joint. So there are a different axes, right? So axis about an axis, things rotate, right? So just like that, you see there are different axes about which the next arm rotates, right? So and then after that, another arm rotates. So all these things are happening. Right, so that is what it is all about. So if you see, uh, this is this is an example, right? So you have a, a platform wherein uh, the entire manipulator is fixed, and the joints allow rotation, right? So as an example, you see pictorially here, right? There are these uh, gears, and then there are these belt drives, and then they are trying to drive different links, right? So they keep rotating. And uh, they are doing this in a controlled manner, right? So for us to perform some actions. It is not just restricted to these rotations only, right? So you could also have revolution, uh, say you could also have uh, uh, translations, right? So here, for example, you see uh, these uh, configurations. There are several such configurations which are possible, right? So you could uh, translate an arm, you could rotate arm, you could do these things together, right? So there are many such examples, right? So many different configurations in which you can have. So this SCARA, for example, is a compliant assembly robot which has only access in the, along about the vertical lines. And uh, that is important, right? So if, you, if suddenly if someone gives you, okay, what is this robot? then you should be able to tell what this corresponds to, right? So this is an articulated robot. We would say this is a articulated configuration. I mean, where do you study? You study this in the engineering disciplines, right? So that is why all the courses in, uh, say, the automation and robotics are tailor-made to understand different fundamentals which are nece necessary to design these systems, right? And in order for you to very effectively design, these all are the courses which you will need to kind of uh, have thorough understanding of, right? Say, for example, engineering mathematics, you know, right? So there are there are different subjects, calculus, calculus, differential equations, right? Optimization. I mean, all these go behind, uh, say, when you try to program a robot, these things are needed. So not only that, even engineering mechanics, for example. So you need to understand the dynamics, you need to understand the kinematics. Right? So all these terms describe how the motion is possible, whether it is really feasible. You can derive the models, right? So you can understand the governing equations and then try to uh, see to what extent this is possible, right? How do we optimize, right? So all these things add up, right? So not only these, like as you see, mechatronics, Ultimately, they are uh, behind, uh, say, all motion, right? So actuators, for example, right? So you need actuators, you need uh, sensors, right? So all these things need to be going hand in hand with the, uh, say, the in mechanics and mathematics, right? So not only that, you also need to program them, right? So how do the how do the motion occur? You need to enter, right? So you need to enter a script. And uh, only then the computer, uh, only then the robot can understand that language. Right? So the language which we speak is different and robots cannot understand as of now, right? So at least some of them, uh, they need a program, right? So you need to understand these programming, have these programming skills too, right? And there are more advanced topics like the control systems or uh, be it, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, right? So these aspect, these aspects help you in designing uh, more fault-tolerant, robust robotic systems, right? Not only these, but there are many associated uh, uh, topics and courses that you will 
uh, get an exposure, be it additive manufacturing, right, or computer vision. So many such uh, places, uh, many such courses are needed, right, so in order for us to develop good understanding of the field. Okay, so this is all about uh, what we need, right? So let us look into what is already there, right? So if you see in robotics, in manufacturing, where are we now, right? So let us see. So there are uh, different application areas wherein this robotics has already been implemented, right? So be it material handling, so how do you kind of move an object from one place to other, right? And how do you load and unload different objects or how do you assemble them? So where this um, assembly uh, operations are done, how is robot helping, right? So be it inspection or welding or painting, we will see these examples, right? So uh, you will get to know where they have been used, right? And uh, for example, if you just pick this material handling, right? So there are uh, uh, different applications within this material handling, right? So be it, as you will see, uh, there is a feeder or a transfer of the material, material loading and unloading, or material palletizing and depalletizing. We will see these things, but before that, let us take a look at what this is, right? So there is a, a quick video here. I'm going to play that, and you will see that, uh, well, this company, RoboWorks, has actually been able to implement this, right? So you see this material that is being moving from one place to other. It is, in fact, trying to test out, right? So it is able to rotate, and you will see that uh, these tasks are often very tedious, right? So for a person, if he has to kind of shake it and try to understand, it is going to be very tedious and sometimes it could be dangerous also, right? So they are very heavy. You may need many people to kind of work simultaneously, but these robots are kind to provide a very safe environment, right? So for uh, people to work together. And uh, there are, uh, as such, you will notice there are uh, lots and lots of efficiency improvements which are going to occur, right? So they kind of re recondition them and uh, say boost the accuracy with which the work is done. That way they are uh, designed for maximum efficiencies, right? And, uh, and all these examples that you have saw, you have seen are uh, mainly in handling the materials, right? So let us see. So as such, you are having different aspects where how do you uh, move the material, right? So this is one example wherein a material vibrating ball is one example wherein these all these small, small parts pass through them and kind of get collected, right? So they are getting trapped and designed well, right? So that is how a specific contour was given and then we could separate them very easily, right? So these are different uh, feeders and uh, uh, say drag feeders as you see bottom or a belt feeder and they are kind of moving these parts from one place to other right and it is not only this but sometimes we would need to move very heavy objects right so for example here if we want to transfer the materials and you see there is a gantry setup right so this is more like a cartesian robot which kind of goes along the rails and it is able to move the objects from one place to other right and also there are many other examples wherein you see palletizing and depalletizing. Okay, that means all these boxes that you see cartons are put together or say distributed from one place to other. So wherein all are done by means of these robots. And what are the benefits? Well, you know, right? So you see they are very reliable, right? So you can uh, uh, write the code properly and uh, the robot performs exactly the way you intended, right? And with very good accuracy, and you can try to have some flexibility on that, and they are very effective. And more importantly, they are not uh, getting tired, right? So unlike a human being, they, they work tirelessly, right? And also they do it fast, right? So speed and very safe, right? So these are all different benefits that you will get excuse me, out of this uh, employing robotic technologies, right? And uh, this is not the only place, right? So you'll see there have been several other places where robotic technologies are used. This is one, right? So inspection, for example, right? So here you see that uh, we in fact can 
inspect all the dimensions, right? So it will be tedious for a person to kind of look through all the dimensions, okay, whether this is within the tolerance or not, okay, if it is, yes, uh, if it is meeting the tolerance, then yes, right? So all such things can be automated, right? So the robot does everything and it is going to um, give us the products which are meeting all the specifications, right? So that way your quality of the product is going to in improve, right? And uh, complete inspection is possible, right? So not only that, say if you have to inspect a very huge device, right? So this can also be done, right? So through these uh, manipulator, you're having a non-destructive testing equipment, which is kind of passing through all the material, the entire material, and letting you know if there are any defects, right? And you will see what robots are doing today, right? So in the next slide, I'm going to show you how this inspection is done on any part. It is no more uh, measuring with the vernier calipers or uh, you're trying to use a screw gauge and try to measure, nothing like that. So everything is done in a non-contact mode, right? So this is where you will see that uh, a Fonook robot, right? So... Aris Technology developed this automated robotic 3D scanning solution to utilize the versatile and compact Fennec LRMate 200 ID robot for manufacturing quality control. The system performs complex 3D inspection of parts in four simple and easy steps. Step one, an operator loads the part tray into the system. Step two, using the system's intuitive HMI, the operator selects the tray to be inspected and presses start. The ARIS system will automatically inspect the parts, collecting millions of data points in just seconds. The system proceeds to scan the part from various angles, which are automatically combined into one 3D file. The resulting 3D file is then compared to the CAD file for the part. Step 3. View Part Report. With the ARIS inspection system, Part reports can be viewed from any device. Step four, run trend analysis. Again, from any device in an intuitive and easy to use format. This automated system from Aris Technology is fast, accurate, and requires minimal labor, all leading to a robotic 3D scanning solution that drastically increases throughput and part quality. To learn more, please visit aristechnology.com. So now you see, so it, there is uh, already this much of technology which is existing, right? So all you need is kind of uh, try and... Uh, Aris system will... Try and build more on top of this, right? So whatever is existing is already there, right? So you would, now the challenge is, how do you, so that is where you are standing and this is where your contribution comes in, right? So it is not just this, right? So there are many other aspects, say, be it another area of application, which is welding, right? So obviously, you know, if you look at uh, look at this welding process, you will see how unpleasant it is, right? So it is in fact very hazardous, right? So there are very many sparks flying. There are a lot, there's a lot of smoke and a lot of radiation, UV radiation, right? So you will see the people having the screens in order to pr protect their eyes. And all these things are in fact now being replaced by these robots, right? So they can do, I mean, they really are very uh, robust, right? So they really don't mind if there is a smoke or sparks falling on them, obviously, right? And uh, of course, there are many other benefits too, right? So you will be able to kind of perform complex welds, right? So you don't really have to uh, manually do it, right? So all complex welds can be done. And uh, moreover, these defects are also nil, right? So that is another uh, interesting aspect. And of course, uniform welding and all these are advantages, right? So it, there have been several other areas where we saw wh where there is a growth, right? So not only welding, but even painting, for example, right? So here you see that uh, there are many advantages, right? So the painting can be done by these manipulators. And what is there behind Right. So you see there are many, many key aspects, right? So I will show you a video uh, through which we will go over these, right? So there are uh, uh, 
uh, the spray coating and all, it's very harmful, right? So particularly when you inhale, it is going to be causing uh, so much of illness to the humans, right? So it, sometimes it, they could be also flammable, right? So all these things can be avoided, right? So thereby you are trying to give a uh, very healthy atmosphere when you operate, right? So to the operator, say, for example, he didn't have to go through this process. I mean, what are the, there are many key things that one has to note down, right? So there are degrees of freedom, right? Why these are important in this video, right? So here you see there is this video, which is, of course, ABB is a pioneer in developing ro robots. And here, this is their Fiat Auto uh, Spy, which is located in Italy. And here you see they are, pro they are painting, right? So they are painting the automobiles. And uh, this manipulator is, you see, there are so many manipulators all around the body and they are doing it in a well-organized manner, right? So they are all coordinated. So they are doing this uh, this uh, painting in a well-structured manner, right? So one, uh, each one manipulator is giving, uh, is given a set of instructions to perform at one location, right? And then everything is being controlled, right? So everything is controlled. And obviously, you will need to know lots of control theories, right? And uh, as you see here, uh, it is so coordinated that these things become important, right? Okay, what is the degrees of freedom? How precise you are able to move? Right? What is the motion control system that is to be employed? And what is the kind of interfacing that is, that is there? And what kind of programs that you have to give, right? So everything has to be programmed. And these are different key aspects which are going to help. And of course, even conserve the paint, right? So sometimes it is so, it is observed that uh, the amount of paint used is also decreased, right? Because they, they are effectively using the quantity of paints and they are doing it optimally. And uh, they, they, it gives out very uniform, uh, levels, right? So, and then it is obviously very safe, right? So everything that is present around uh, the body is only those robots and it is going to be very safe for human beings, right? So it is not only this that you will find uh, applications, you will also see uh, robotic assemblies, right? robotic assembly and uh, many complex assembly processes can be very easily done by this, right? And that too with very very good precision and uh, in a short time, right? So that is very interesting, right? And uh, also it is consistent, right? Every time it does the same thing and it is going it very accurately. And what are these tasks? It could be inserting a shaft, right? So for example, in a hole, or it could be screwing of a nut or a, a screwing of a bolt, right? And it could also be unscrewing of these. And uh, not only here, but you will also see several applications in, say, building a circuit board, right? So you may want to insert a component in a particular location, and they can do it very systematically and uh, consistently, right? And as an example, we will just have a very small video on uh, how this assembly is done. Here I will show you there is an engine assembly. Okay, so you know these engines, right? So all uh, trucks and uh, uh, buses, they have these very huge uh, multi-piston engines and they are done very, very easily on this, right? So you will see what is happening here, right? This is being assembled, right? So all these engine parts are assembled. So here you see there is a huge block. Two FANUC Robotics M900IA 600 robots use IR vision and coordinated motion to transfer an engine block from a conveyor to a precision pallet to begin the engine assembly. So they are moving this entire engine block onto an assembly uh, location. Where the engine block is accurately placed onto a precision pallet using IR vision. Now you see there are many other things that needs. The engine block is then conveyed to an M900IA where the main bearing caps are located with IR vision and removed in preparation for crankshaft installation. So you will understand what. An M710IC installs the main bearings. IR vision is used to locate and verify the correct bearing is being installed. 
IR vision is used to verify the orientation of the crankshaft before an M900IA installs it in the engine block. Now you see crankshaft. The M900IA350 installs the main bearing caps and precisely torques the bolts, securing the crankshaft in the engine block. And there will be a piston also. Right, so all these things you will study when you understand mechanical engineering courses, right? An M710IC operating at an in-process verification station uses IR vision and a robot auxiliary axis to measure crankshaft torque and end play. Now you see an R2000IT top loader distance from a buffer area and carries them into the piston insertion cell. Now you see this robot is doing part transfer also, right? And this is a piston, of course. And an R2000IB and an M900IA350 use IR vision and aux axes to install the pistons into the engine in a precisely coordinated process. So as you see, there are many critical components to be done very precisely, right? So these, there are several such robots which are installed and they are doing in a coordinated manner all these operations, right? So. I mean, that is how you see so much of precision and so much of uh, accuracy within these engines, right? Manually, it's very difficult, right? So it's almost impossible. And how are we going forward, right? So, so, so far you have witnessed what is already there, right? So today in the industry, but how do we go from here? Where do we go? And uh, these are different challenges, right? So as you see, there are many automation challenges like last mile. Okay, that means it needs uh, interference with the human being. Okay, so human is there beside the robot. Each robot should not harm the human being, right? So these things are important, and that is where cobots have come up, right? So these cobots are collaborative robots, and uh, they are going to help uh, work alongside the humans, right? right. And there are many other uh, such challenges, right? So cognitive skills are needed within the robot and it should have very uh, high dexterity and autonomy. And moreover, very interestingly, you will also need other aspects like machine learning, artificial intelligence, industry 4.0, right? So some of them we will briefly touch upon in the subsequent slides, okay? And there is yet another concept called RAS, okay? This is robot as a service. Right. Instead of having a capital, say purchasing the entire thing, we could have robot as a service. So there are many such uh, challenges which one needs to meet. As an example, cobots. OK, so what are these cobots? These cobots provide us a very safe working environment, right? So the person is just right there. He's telling the robot, OK, move your, uh, say, tool from this point to this point, And the robot does exactly the way. And uh, you see, this is very, very much essential, right? So only then uh, robots and humans can stay together, right? So there are many other challenges. If the robots have to stay with the, uh, alongside the humans, there are many other aspects which need to be considered, right? So that is a challenge. And as such, you see that the market for these cobots is uh, growing. Right, so by 2026, it is predicted a very high amount, right? So $7,972 million, and it is huge, right? And we have also seen, we have also said, what is this uh, industry 4.0, right? So let us see what is this industry 4.0, right? So let me not make it very complicated, but uh, there are from the very beginning, right? So we know the very first industry. Uh, revolution is more like uh, using the water and the steam power to run an engine, right? So very old uh, steam engines and rails, they used to make use of water power, right? So that is more like an industry one. And then you have industry two, where we are able to make use of electricity to kind of mass produce different uh, products, okay? So that is uh, revolution two, right? And in the third revolution, we made use of the computer and uh, automated the things, right? So use these robots and try to automate. But then what next, right? So this is next. This is we. This is where we are, right? So industry 4.0 is more like 
a cyber physical system wherein we have both computers doing this work or rather the robots doing this work and also the human beings together and they are trying to exchange information right so that is that is when you can understand the robot okay what the robot is going to do next right so you need to understand and then keep something ready for it to do the operation right so these tasks are all under industry 4.0 i mean you are trying to make the industry smart right so you are trying to communicate the information between the machines and of course even the human right so this is i mean there are these four aspects that are there right so for industry 4.0 which is say the cyber physical system internet of things right so internet of things wherein you exchange the information right and you have to compute based on uh, the information that you provide a cloud is uh, doing some computations and not only that but it is also having some cognitive computing so that uh, the environment is very safe right so this is where we are and uh, the future obviously is going to have a better workforce right so how do you develop through you right so you have to enable all these skills you have to understand different skills right so that is where because anyway the robot is doing many dangerous and dull jobs for us no problem right so we will do much better things right so you will get better paying better paying positions and uh, Uh, obviously there is a, a demand for highly skilled workforce in this uh, robotics areas right so only then you will be able to program them right and uh, this is a misunderstanding that uh, okay jobs are lost due to automation no nothing like that it is in fact creating right? the automation and robotics is creating more and more jobs say an engineer a computer 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 technician or a software technician or it consultant right so all these are new jobs which this uh, automation and robotics is offering right and for which you have to understand all these skills and try to face these challenges right so what are these challenges just to recap we just mentioned that there is this cobot right so we need to develop a uh cobot collaborative human robot collaboration aspects have to be understood so these all are the future challenges so not only these but uh, you will see that many lightweight robots need to be designed right so they are very safe for humans so i mean all are the all are different aspects that uh, you need to understand right so so in the next slide that you see so this is more some more challenges right so obviously you need to also design a very nice gripper right so that is going to if that is simulating more like a human hand it is going to help pick up things with more dexterity right and it is going to also give a safe environment for uh, the humans who are standing next to the robot right and there are many aspects right? you can go on and on and try to see where all they can use right so i mean they, the technology is so advanced that uh, you can do self repairing and also more ethical and moral questions come up right so you should be able to answer them through ai and uh, all advanced techniques and the industry as such is at this point wherein you will need all these concepts integrated together right so cobots internet of robotic things big data to smart data so you have to do computations on cloud and uh, do it securely right so, so no one wants to have access to these uh, proprietary information right so and there are many ras concept that we just discussed for small industries right so these all are different industry challenges which uh, we need to do right now right and uh, what are the opportunities well there are many right so towards the end i mentioned that we will talk about these and uh, there are this is where is a prediction right so from 2023 there is a prediction that okay uh, the robotic uh, companies uh, have these interest and growing interest in these uh, automation and robotics aspects so there are not just a, a manipulator Uh, or any automated guided vehicle there there is a distribution right so it could be a stationary installation or it is a mobile platform or an automated guided vehicles 
right? So all these put together, they have been showing almost 20%, 22 to 30% of rise by 2030. And this is a big number. And not only these, but even particularly when we talk about manufacturing industries, right? So robots have been employed in all these countries, okay, be it France, US, and all these countries have a very large amount of robots per every thousand workers in an industry. And this particular aspect also has been projected, say, by 2027, it's likely to boost up to, say, $66 billion. And uh, this is kind of giving us an understanding of what these systems are adopted, right? So there are several industries which are adopting to automate things by using these robots, right? And uh, you will see that there are many industries in different countries. It's not just one country that we can restrict to, right? So all these countries have are good at one particular aspect, right? So it is not only automotive industry, but many other manufacturing industries also are beginning to introduce these automated concepts, right? So there's implementation of robots. And eventually, uh, in India also, you're going to see a surge in the usage of robotics in robots in manufacturing industries, right? So this is how the global trend is, and obviously it is going to, right? And uh, as such, as a quick slide, you will see that there are many industries, right? So you have already seen Fanuc Robotics, KUKA, and there are many other uh, industries which have, which are pioneers in developing these robots. And uh, these robotic in engineers are needed, and they are in fact in great demand in all these industries. Okay, and uh, we will kind of wind up uh, in a minute. Uh, be before that, I would like to show you a quick video, right? And this is an industrial application and you will see two robots working together, right? So in an industry and trying to perform the tasks, right? <laughs> This intelligent machining operation developed by FANUC Robotics features two overhead FANUC R2000IB 100P robots performing multiple machine tending operations to four FANUC RoboDrill machine tools. The cycle starts when the first FANUC robot, seen on the left, grabs a raw part from the rear of the system. At the first robo drill, the robot enters from the front to remove a machined part and inserts a raw part. The first robot then loads and unloads the second robo drill for the next operation and places the part on a re-grip station located at the center of the machines. A second robot on the right picks the part from the re-grip stand. The robots use intelligent interference avoidance while exchanging parts at the regrip station to assure collision protection is being implemented. Interference avoidance is useful for robotic applications that require the use of multiple robots in close proximity. The second robot continues to load and unload the two remaining FANUC RoboDrill machine tools in sequence to produce a finished part. This application demonstrates the flexibility and speed of the unique overslung design, which allows the robots to front load the machines and perform tasks on both sides of the rail. This adds efficiency to the machine tending process by implementing robotic automation with multiple machines. To learn more about FANUC Robotics and our full line of machine loading and unloading robots, including the FANUC R2000IB 100P, please visit www.fanucrobotics.com and click on Machine Tending. So you see, right? So you see where we are standing right now, right? So there are already so much of advancement which has taken place, and this is the place we are starting. And for you, as uh, fresh uh, graduates uh, who are prospective graduates and, and uh, you are 
going to take up new challenges, right? So these are just to kind of summarize. We discussed uh, uh, how comp how complex these tasks are and uh, how robot is in improving the efficiency and precision in these tasks, right? And uh, we have also witnessed that uh, there is a demand for skilled workforce, particularly with robotics knowledge. And uh, the future challenges here are more towards collaborative robotics design and say addressing the challenges involved in Industry 4.0. OK, then with this, uh, let me conclude and uh, thank you all for your attention. Thank you so much, thank sir. Wonderful. It was really informative also, and I'm sure that the students loved the session because uh, it had everything that a mechanical engineer, someone who is aspiring to be a mechanical engineer, want to know. It was co covered in the whole session. So once again, thank you so much for the session. Students, now you can type your questions in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, so most of the questions as of now posted in the chat box is regarding admission related, like when will be AEEE conducted? What will be the pattern of questions asked for AEEE? So all these queries you can tie write to us at btechetamrita.edu. One of our counselors will be helping you with all these queries. Apart from that, if you have any questions in the related to today's session, you may please type it in the chat box, else we can end the session now. Uh, I cannot see any questions related to a session coming up. So yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining us today and I'm wishing you all a good day. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Martin.